Hi guys, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to contrast the conventional medical world versus the holistic world yet again, this time with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We're gonna talk about where their pros are, where their cons are, and ultimately, which route I think is the most recommended if you do have SIBO. Stay tuned to find out more. So similar to our last video about IBS, we're gonna break this down into food, band-aids, and actual honest-to-goodness treatment of the condition you're trying to treat. So let's start off with food. In the conventional medical world, from my experience dealing with the regular run-of-the-mill GI doctor who diagnoses or hypothesizes SIBO for their patient, I've seen pretty much zero nutritional recommendations from the vast majority of the GI world. That being said, if you find a GI doctor that is particularly versed in research or if they follow the work of Dr. Pimentel, then there is some likelihood, not high, but there is some likelihood that they could recommend the low fermentation diet from Cedar sinai and that might be a nutritional conversation that they have with you, or they may send you off to the dietitian to get some counseling. But more often than not, I mean, I would, I would wager for my area of the world in North Carolina, 99.99% of the time, there is no SIBO specific nutritional advice given from my viewpoint. However, I will say if you have had the diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome, and then you get diagnosed with SIBO and you have both of those diagnoses, then they might have a conversation about nutrition with you because of the IBS. But they're not thinking that diet is going to help you with the SIBO. They're more so gonna to talk to you about either increasing or decreasing fiber, hydration, perhaps an elimination diet like low FODMAP, but that's really more so because they're thinking along the lines of IBS management as opposed to treating the SIBO. As far as SIBO specific recommendations, I have yet to see anything come from a conventional medical setting. However, the conventional world is kind of craptacular in its own way, pun intended, but the holistic world, once again, just way overdoes it. More often than not, I would say 90 plus percent of the time, you're gonna get into a very restricted diet, of which there are many, with the most common being low FODMAP or the low FODMAP SCD hybrid from Allison Seebecker. So usually in the holistic, you know, functional medicine, integrated medicine, naturopathic medicine, et cetera, professions, Almost always there's gonna be a knee-jerk reflex where they hear SIBO and they think, gotta do low FODMAP. And you're gonna to be told by people in this profession that you have to starve the SIBO and it's part of the treatment of the SIBO. And if you eat the FODMAPs, if you fudge up on your diet, you're gonna feed the SIBO. And if that's not enough to terrify you, I don't know what would be. What I would say once again, is that there is a time and a place for some restriction. I mean, I can think of a woman, she was just absolutely debilitated with symptoms, very, very sick. She had all of the SIBO root causes that I could possibly assess her for. And one of the things that I did with her is I recommended low FODMAP and it was miraculous for her. It really, really helped cool down her symptoms and bought us time to actually work on the root causes. So there is a time and a place for this. If you're really, really symptomatic, it can be frankly life-changing to do a Band-Aid diet and get some symptomatic relief for a couple of weeks or a couple of months while you're actually treating the dang thing. But this is where the nutritional recommendations end up being a very big band-aid and it's not actually treating the SIBO itself. I have yet to see a single research article suggest that diet can actually treat SIBO, but it can minimize symptoms and get you some quality of life back and buy you some time while you're trying to treat it. So that's the big thing to know is that these diets don't treat SIBO, but it can help with symptomatic improvement. And in my opinion, my profession, the functional medicine world tends to be way too restricted and have people on these restricted diets for way, 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 way too long. Now over here, let's hop down to the band-aids and go back to conventional medicine. So you go into a GI doctor, they diagnose you with SIBO, what kind of band-aids could they offer you? I would say this is where the IBS specific, 
you know, prescription medications and over-the-counter medications are going to be the biggest band-aids that they're going to use. So similar to that other video that we did about IBS, think about things like antispasmodics, anticholinergics, bile sequestering drugs, uh, antidepressants, pain medications. It really runs the gamut depending on your symptoms. But any of those IBS medications that are touted to treat your IBS, in fact, are just band-aiding the symptoms of the IBS or SIBO or both. So those can be somewhat useful, again, depending on your symptoms and how debilitating they are for you and how much quality of life improvement you get out of using these. But ultimately, these things are going to be band-aids. For the you know, the holistic side of things, I will actually say that there is one thing that fits into both of these categories, and it can be a Band-Aid and a treatment. I know I've used it this way, and I know other practitioners have as well, and that is antimicrobials. In my experience, working with SIBO for many years now and working with IBS, antimicrobials are beneficial up to a point they can be a little bit of a hybrid depending on the situation. They could be a bit of a Band-Aid or they could be an honest to goodness treatment. The way that you kind of tell the difference and you know, I've, I've had situations where this ends up being beneficial in the long run. The way that you tell the difference if you're using antimicrobials as a Band-Aid or if you're really honest to goodness treating the SIBO is dependent on how long you've been on them. If you have gotten to a point where you cannot function unless you are on an antimicrobial, then it's probably starting to get into the Band-Aid category. But if you do, you know, if you are freshly diagnosed with SIBO and you do some oregano oil or berberine or neem for a period of a month or two, and then you go off of the antimicrobials and you still feel good and you don't immediately feel like you need to go back on another antimicrobial or heaven forbid, search for the holy grail, the magical antimicrobial that will cure you, then it's probably fine. You know, a couple of months worth of antimicrobial treatment can be world changing if you have SIBO and it really can work wonders. And that I would classify more in the realm of treatment. So I'm gonna say ballpark, let's say like one, two, three months as a very rough ballpark. Versus if you have landed yourself in this weird kind of la la land of always searching for the next best antimicrobial, searching the forums. If you have been on antimicrobials for say six plus months, and when you stop one, you have to immediately start another one, or you can't get off of antimicrobials, then you're probably band-aiding something that needs to be addressed. For some people, it might be that they are hellaciously iron deficient. For other people, maybe they're vitamin D deficient. Other people, it's stress. Other people, it's dysbiosis or candida or something else but there must be something else that has necessitated the use of long-term antimicrobials versus, hey, I have SIBO, hey, I treated the SIBO, hey, I feel better, the SIBO is good, right? So that's where I think it could be a little bit of both. Versus, luckily and unluckily, it depends you know, what your experience has been with this. In the conventional GI world, the antibiotics are the closest thing you're gonna get to an actual treatment of SIBO. And this will depend on the GI doctor, your insurance, uh, their experience treating SIBO and the type of SIBO you have. So for some people, they're just gonna be prescribed Rifaximin, you know, 10 or 14 days of Rifaximin or Zyfaxin, and then off you go, pooping into the rainbows, I don't know. And that's usually inadequate to treat most people with SIBO, but at least it's something, and some people do well with that. For people with methane dominant SIBO, they might be given a combination of rifaximin and neomycin, and that could be helpful for them. Um, you know, I've seen people who take Cipro, I've seen people who are given doxycycline, it really depends. But the, the research points more towards rifaximin and perhaps neomycin if you have methane SIBO. But at least, this is where it can get dicey, at least conventional medicine is only gonna give you a couple of rounds of antimicrobials, typically. And now that could be a good thing or a bad thing, right? Because if you go to a GI doctor and they are adamant that you just need 14 days of Rifaximin and then you're done, you should be cured. If you don't fall into that category, if you do have a worst case of SIBO or if you need more antimicrobial therapy 
it can be really frustrating to try to communicate that to a doctor who only ever prescribes 14 days at maximum for any of his or her patients. So it can be, it can be a point of frustration, but the good thing at least is that more often, specific to SIBO, the conventional world is less likely to overuse and abuse the antimicrobials. I have seen it before. I've seen GI doctors give, you know, rifaximin 10 times to the same patient, but it's less common that that happens. Usually they just go, you're not cured after one or two rounds of rifaximin? That's weird. You're weird. I don't know what to do with you. And then you're off Googling on your own and thinking you're doomed. But at least they're not going to over abuse the antibiotics for SIBO typically, nine times out of 10. Versus, again, in the functional medicine space, it's not uncommon for that to become kind of a crutch and a band aid. Now, again, I've had patients where that is necessary. And I've had some patients who need to do a very, very slow weaning process. Like I remember one lady, we were using a liquid tincture at one point as an antimicrobial. And I think she was up, she started off the dose at like one full dropper full. So like one milliliter, you know, two or three times a day. And then we backed her off to three quarters of a dropper and then half a dropper, a quarter of a dropper. And we literally got her down to a point where she was taking individual drops of this tincture and then she was finally to go off of it. Like she was, she was able to go off of that tincture, that antimicrobial support. And that did take us months and months and months to whittle her down all the way to the point where she could discontinue it. But that's not typical. That is gonna be a more progressed case typically or somebody who has other root causes or other inflammatory processes that have yet to be addressed more often than not. So one to three, maybe four months of antimicrobial therapy in the realm of reason, six plus months, start thinking about other root causes because I think the antimicrobials might be a bit of a band-aid and they might be doing a little bit more harm than good if they are compromising your good bacteria. Another honest to goodness treatment that you can get out of the conventional GI world is prokinetics. And, you know, I would say that out of all of my patients who have gone to GI doctors, like MDs, DOs, et cetera, prior to working with me, I would say the majority of my patients have not taken a prokinetic prior to working with me. Um, I would say probably 80% plus of the people who just go to a GI doctor and then come to me a little bit later on, 80% or so probably have not had the opportunity to try a prokinetic yet. And then maybe like 20% of people have taken, you know, Motegrity or some other type of prokinetic, Motegrity being the most common. But if you have lousy motility, then that can actually be correcting some of the underlying problem. It might not address the reason why your motility is crappy. It's like the root cause of the root cause, right? But it's at least getting closer to an honest to goodness treatment. And what's bizarre though, is that again, about 80% of people who come to me from a normal GI clinic haven't had prokinetics, maybe 20% they have. Over here though, I am just perpetually surprised how few integrative and functional doctors are using prokinetics on a regular basis. I've had patients who go to other naturopaths or other functional doctors and then they come to work with me and at best, maybe these people were prescribed something like Motel Pro or Iberogast for like a month or two or maybe they were prescribed the prokinetic only after the antimicrobial or the elemental diet was used to treat the SIBO. But as far as like getting people on prokinetics promptly and then having a dialogue about how long they need to be on that prokinetic, not super common in my profession, oddly enough. So I think that that is an area where the holistic professions could probably beef up their efforts a little bit. And then of course there's other treatments too. So antimicrobials can fall under either depending on the situation and the person, but they would also be things like probiotics, prebiotics, um, you know, anti-candida supplements. If you have CFO, if you have small intestinal fungal overgrowth with your SIBO, you're almost guaranteed to not have it treated adequately on the conventional side. I would give you a 0.1% chance of getting treatment for that on the conventional end of things. 
versus I do think a lot of holistic doctors and nutritionists and acupuncturists are talking to their patients about the possibility of candida overgrowth in addition to SIBO. So that is another way that they really differ is that the holistic world traditionally has been much more willing to have the yeast conversation as opposed to the conventional world, which they, they're really pretty close-minded to that typically. So there you have it, folks. We talked about the conventional treatment of SIBO and the holistic treatment of SIBO. They both have their pros and cons. It's not that one is totally right or totally wrong, but I will say in my experience, you oddly enough might be better off, nutritionally speaking, going to a GI doctor and getting treated by them because at least they're not going to fuck up your diet and make you go on some god awful restricted diet in the hopes of starving the SIBO. That is where I really have the most critique for my own profession is this idea of starving the SIBO and making people paranoid about their food and keeping people on restricted diets for way, way, way too long, unfortunately is far more common in my profession as opposed to the traditional GI world. However, you might get inadequate clearance or inadequate eradication of your SIBO working with the GI world because a lot of doctors are only willing to prescribe one or two or maybe three rounds of antimicrobials or antibiotics in this case, and then they kind of go, eh, I don't know what to do with you. Versus over here, if anything, I think that some functional doctors can over prescribe antimicrobials to a point where they become a bit of a band-aid or a crutch. Again, it's not that one is totally better or worse than the other, it's just that they have their quirks and they have their biases and they have their lenses through which they see the world and they see the body and it can lead to some blind spots potentially for both professions. But most importantly, I hope that this video helps you manage or treat your SIBO most effectively and quickly so that you can get back to eating those FODMAPs and feel like yourself again. As always, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Tell me, have you gone to a traditional GI doctor and has that doctor treated you for SIBO? And if so, what did the treatment actually entail? Was it just 14 days of rifaximin and then see you never? Or did they actually do more for you? Did they recommend the low fermentation diet from Cedar sinai What kind of conversation did they have with you per treating the SIBO? And similarly, have you worked with a holistic professional? Have you worked with somebody in the field of functional medicine or integrative nutrition or naturopathic medicine? And if so, was my assessment correct? Did they lean really, really heavily on elimination diets and prolonged restricted diets? Did they maybe overuse the antimicrobial herbs because they had this hippy dippy, oh, it's natural, so it's not gonna do any harm, baby kind of mentality? Or were they to the point and concise and really getting to the root cause and the true treatment rather than leaning a little bit too heavily on the antimicrobials? And did they recommend things like prokinetics? Because like I said, I'm finding that it's, it's a little bit of a sporadic and half-assed approach on the prokinetics on the functional medicine end. And it's just, it seems to really depend on the doctor and who you see and whether or not they are aware of the usefulness of prokinetics if you go to the GI setting. But tell me all about it in the links or the comments down below. I would love to hear from you and hear about your experience. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.